Hello, 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 beautiful people. Welcome back to the day four of Deadman Armageddon. Yesterday, I had one of the best days in Deadman mode ever, but then I died. But that didn't set us back too far, it just opened our eyes as to what gear is worth taking to the breaches. We start today off with the 4 a.m. breach, and we managed to get very decent points in that breach simply because of the fact that it was a stacked one instead of the area restricted one. The goal for the whole tournament is to eventually kill 75 of every single boss. This is pretty much the limit in order to get a maximum amount of deadman points. My short term goal is to reach the slayer bosses, Cerberus being one of the most important ones on the menu, but there's also smoke devil and hydras later on down the line. Alright, that being said, let's jump right into the video. I wanted to go to sleep, but I was just gonna spend some time fishing and we just got a sigil of the porcupine. Uh, this is one of the good ones that we've gotten before and we can sell this for pretty good money. Dude, this fishing spot is sprinting. I just pulled the versatility. This one is also really good. Yeah, 1.5 mil. Nice. I'm still chilling before going back to sleep. Like, I don't know why, but like this fishing is like super enjoyable and eventually I want to max anyways. So doing this during the night time is pretty chill. Versatility and now I got arcane swiftness. As well this one is one of the good ones also I'm definitely banking them this is like three mil this is pretty much pays out for what we lost yesterday already that's beautiful wait a second arcane swiftness is seven eight million right now I can literally buy up absolutely everything with this I'm planning on going back to sleep so I'm doing a very quick preparations for the next breach I'm gonna have sigil of arcane swiftness available in case I die to very quickly rebuild so that's staying in my bank until the next death but for now I also have three sigils of versatility and these ones actually sell for very good price as well over 1 million each so before going to sleep, I'm going to put these offers in for one point one one fifty. I think it's fair. And we'll see if those sell when I wake up. Good morning. Next bridge is in 20 minutes and sigil of versatility sold. So all I want for this bridge is to just get a cult. A cult should help us quite tremendously. And I'm still going to go in a very basic gear, just uh, mystics and a cult if I can get this for 2300. No, I might need to sell a couple more things to get it for a little bit more expensive. There it is, the price went a little bit up, but for 3.9 million we were able to also get an occult necklace, which uh, will increase our damage on the bridge. So that is big, the bridge is in 10 minutes, let's see how we do today. Bridge spawned North Kandarin Kingdom. Nobody around me, just me and Duriel. That can be a ton of damage. No, where, 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 come to me, come to me buddy. Just me and you, buddy. There we go, there we go. That's what we like to see. Oh, I didn't check the points at the start, but I have 39.4 at the moment. I'm very curious to see what we're gonna end up on. Obviously, these breaches are a bit different. Because there's not that many mobs to hit. Okay, a few more people spotted it eventually, but definitely my MVP. Only tier 5, unfortunately. Very good damage on Justicar, I'd say. Another tier 5. Hmm... Usually I don't like these breaches, but so far I'm getting a lot of uh, mobs that I am perma hitting, which is going really well. Yeah, another tier 5 there. Maybe they up the mob counter that spawns. Okay, somebody is on us. Okay, it's a risk. Okay, we landed the freeze. Okay, we have three more minutes on the bridge. Let's see if we can make something happen. There's a lot of PKing going on. Okay, tier 5, I'm gonna use this. 42.6k points right now. From a non-standard bridge, I think that's pretty decent. Okay, I think I've done enough running around, didn't really find any other monsters. But still, a really good bridge made, again, a decent bit of money. So I guess it is time for us to go work on more Slayer. We're trying to get to 91 for Cerberus, 93 for Smoke Devil, and 95 for Hydras. And in the process, probably get as many prayer levels and defense levels as we can. All right, time to go check on Necreos back again. See how they are at the moment, how packed this place is. Back with my standard swiftness, prosperity, and devotion. First level of the day is 89 prayer. I'm hoping I'll get this all the way to 99 purely by using devotion and while I'm already working on Slayer anyways. Oh, nice. Superior Necriarch. Let's see what this will be. 
Okay, task is completed. Come on, be good. Mage's book, huh? What? Okay, let's get out of here. No way I just got a mage's book. That's like one of the, I don't know, just like a super rare drop from the deadman mode table. That is awesome. I'm gonna go ahead and put that in the deposit box for now. And we're just gonna keep taking Necrios, use this basically until we die. Because this place is awesome for Slayer, Prayer, and drops. I've also made a decision not to use overloads in multi areas, at least at the moment, simply because it drops my defense all the way down to 60 and then if I get hit it's so hard to tank. I will be using them however when I start chinning because uh, I might be doing the same spot and just throw chins to get my range level up as well, we'll see. First I need to print more cash. I think I have a fairly decent plan right now, at the end of the trip I sell my rune items, make a bunch of cash and then just spend it on chins, it's not a lot of chins, but it will for sure add up. And not only that, I'm never really risking that money if I were to die anyway, so this is kinda what I'm gonna do, I think. Ooh, no way I got another sigil of versatility. Very good. Finally another superior, let's see what this one gives, I'm excited. Ooh, nothing too good in this one. Ah, uh, that's not ideal, is it? Oh, what an escape. What an escape. Two pickers as well. Little in and out agility action. And we are out of there. That was like three seconds after that superior spawned. It's almost like they were ready. And why did they not hit the other guy? Ah, I'm, I'm seeing what's going on. This might be some uh, team action. All right, Um, regardless, we made it out alive again. If you are enjoying today's episode, consider subscribing. Okay, yeah, this guy definitely called those friends on me. So from now on, I'm taking that spot because it's closer to agility shortcut. There is no way they go for me and they let him train. What? Sigil of Swashbuckler, that's one of the best ones. Okay, let me get out of here real quick. All melee weapons with a base attack speed above 4 will have it reduced by 1. So basically, Arcane is the magic variant of it. This is the melee variant of it. Super, super, super good sigil. I'll check the price of it. I think I keep this one and I sell my dupe Arcane because I will probably be using this for something like Cerberus, which is coming very shortly, hopefully. This is probably the best sigil we could drop at this point in the account. That is amazing. And very quickly, I'll tell you the price. Hold up, Swashbuckler. Yeah, it's 3.5 mil at the moment, so not as expensive as Arcane. Uh, but still, I mean, it is very good, basically. Each one of these chins go for about 4.7k, so 100 of them is 470k, just to put it a little bit into perspective how much this costs, but we're up to 82 ranged already, which is not bad. There's 83 range as well. Ooh, and 90 prayer, I didn't even know this level was happening. That's a very, very high prayer level already. We waited long for this one, but here is a 91 Slayer, meaning we can now tackle on the next boss, Cerberus. This one's gonna be very dangerous, but first we need to finish this task and I'll tell you more about him a bit later. Uh, there is 92 defense and 119 combat already. The task is 5 kills away, so we're basically done here. And I guess it's gonna be time to prepare for Cerberus very shortly. Beautiful looting bag. Even more loot in the inventory, we are chilling. Cerberus is a slayer only boss and my goal is as soon as I reach the slayer only bosses I try to finish it and I try to do all the combat achievements as well because combat achievements are dead man points. For Cerberus we have to kill him 75 times anyways to get max amount of points but we will actually try to kill it 150 times, simply because that is going to unlock the Cerberus Master for us. On top of that, we need to kill it once without it summoning any souls, we need to not take any melee damage from him, which should be simple, we need to not step in lava pools, simple enough, we need to negate 6 or more souls, simple enough, and obviously get kill counts. So, now I need to think what kind of sigils I want to take to this fight. This fight is super away from safety, so I need to do a little bit of thinking, and I need to sell a little bit of my bank. First sigil that comes to mind that could be useful, but I don't know if I will actually end up using it, is sigil of the last recall. This one can teleport you back to the boss fight when you were there and it's not going for that much right now. Okay, the last one sold for 750k, so this is the first thing I wanna buy. 
that is Sigil of the Last Recall bought for 799k. And looking at my Sigil collection, I don't actually think there's many Sigils left. I mean, look at this. I've collected so many, which is... For me, a very satisfying part of Deadman mode. I also wanted to very quickly show you this account. Do you guys remember Mika B5, the bugged account? I decided to train the stats up. 90 attack, strength, defense, and health was enough to reach 111 combat. This account is now gonna be printing us money. I've already made a bunch from simply AFK fishing, AFK mining, eventually AFK wood cutting as well. The reason why I'm letting you know this is because I want to give this guy a sigil of prosperity as well, giving me 20% higher chance to actually land on different sigils. As you can see, I actually have quite a lot of them right here already. Even something like sigil of the last recall, consistency, resilience, storage. I've got some decent sigils, but with prosperity, we could get even more. So this now gives me two accounts that are permanently making me money in deadman mode. But I just need to invest a sigil of prosperity into this guy. Selling the sigil of arcane swiftness for 5.8 million. And it insta sold for 5851. And now my Mika B5 account can comfortably buy Sigil of Prosperity with this alongside a Dragon Pickaxe and a ton of feathers. Before we even consider doing Cerberus, I have to get my agility higher. I'm using Agile Fortune, Exaggeration and Lithness. And we're just quickly gonna do a couple of laps on Seer scores. That is 70 agility. We can now use the shortcut and do the Cerberus. And when it comes to sigils, I'm thinking I'll be using Swashbuckler, Last Recall and Thrall, which is a bit different to what I originally thought about. But I think that's gonna make it the safest and the kills should be fairly quick as well. I'm borrowing Sight of Satisfy temporarily because he's not using it. But if I die with it, I have to pay it back. So uh, we need to make sure we do not die. Firstly though, we're gonna attune Slaughter, attune Versatility, change our spellbook to Lunar, NPC contact Duradel, and ask him for a Hellhound's task. 144 is a very awkward number because I need to kill 150 of them, so I will be using Bracelet for a couple of kills. Swashbuckler, Thrall and Last Recall and I'm trying to buy a black mask as well right now. The price is around 800k so I need to sell a couple more things in my inventory. I sold Sigil of Versatility for 1.6 mil. I think black mask should be easy to get now. There it is, 845k, perfect. Secondly, we're gonna get ourselves a pair of D-Boots. And lastly, I would like to get myself a pair of, uh, let's say, tank legs. 500k for Verax plate skirts seems like a steal and I think we're looking quite good right now actually All right, so we're definitely not gonna be using overload for the Cerberus. We're going back to super combat potions We can't really afford to drop our defense level that low, uh, but we are gonna be training attack with this So hoping to get a bunch of attack levels because defense will be trained with magic whenever I'm barraging and then attack is only trainable with melee, so that's basically where we're at. I got the Trinket of the Undead, I got the Sigil of the Last Recall, and I also got a couple of house tabs, so we're looking pretty prepared for this. Okay, that's going really fast with Swashbuckler. Okay, so we got the anti-bite mechanic, uh, but basically we're just gonna try to get a bunch of combat achievements as we go. There's a Demon's Best Friend. And I'm just gonna do a couple of kills, and then bank, and then Last Recall back, a couple of kills. That's how I'm gonna do it. I think the no bite is to never get milled, which is pretty good. Okay, so I just wanna test how it feels like if I TP out. I should be able to recharge my prayer and go anywhere I want. And then it remembers Asgardia and I should be able to just teleport right back in. So the sigil choices is definitely good. I do need a looting bag though, I think. And a couple more prayer pots. In fact, I think the play for this is just to pre-pot. Literally like this. Pre-pot, grab like two prayer pods, this is good amount of food, and then just go back. Unrequired anti-fire is now completed as well, meaning I never got hit by the pools. That is really solid. Ah, oh, there is no way I got TB. Okay. I should be able to escape here. No, I can't because he has freezes. Okay. Whew. 
need to do 35 more seconds. So I need to hit him back. There we go. And now I'm out. One, two, three. Go through. And I think I'm out here. There we go. Man. Three kills, bro, is what it took. But I did manage to tank a full TB with a lot of supplies spared. Like, lots of nerves there. But, like, I can't really... Like, the guy has seeds. So I can't free step under. The other guy has seeds as well. So I can't free step under. So I need to tank a full TB. Then I need to bolt hit and tab or work the door. I still didn't play it comfortably. I got like kind of shock surprised. But damn, man. This is scary, bro. What? How did they find me so fast? Boys, boys, boys. We might have just gotten attacked on our main. But look at this. Look what I just fished on the Mika B5 account. Sigil of Arcane Swiftness. Do you guys know how much that is? Six million dollars. And we are now 83 fishing on the account as well. I'm just using official client when I play on this account. Uh, but this is the power of Sigil of the Prosperity that we just fed this account. And now it's printing. It's awesome. I'm gonna put it here. If I die, this literally funds a full Arim setup and an occult. So this is beautiful, but it's gonna sit in here for now. And we will keep on fishing. I will only show you the clips when I get really expensive and good sigils on this account. <gasps> yes! Primordial Crystal! Oh my god, okay. Uh, yeah, we're banking this immediately. No way! 7kc, we got a crystal! Okay, I think these go for a lot, by the way. I need to double check. But if I had to guess, I would say these go for a lot of money right now. Nice, that should be combat achievement. Ooh, I was waiting for this one. This one is hard to complete. So now I've done all the hard tasks. Now all I need to do is do one really slow kill. And after that, it's just 150 kill count. Yeah, there it is. Ghostbuster also finished. Lovely. Now we just need 150 kill count. So I will start bringing bracelets because I need to save a couple of KC. And the rest should be a breeze. Unless I get yoinged by PK airs. Thralls were good, but now I want to try it with Formidable Fighter. And then I also want to try one with the Restoration Relic. Simply because the problem right now is I do 2 to 3 kills and then I'm basically out of food. And if I get caught on the 3rd or 4th kill, it is very hard to escape a PK air. So I want to play it safe. But Sigil of the Last Recall has a 5 minute timer. So I can't just bank here and instantly go back. I always need to end up sitting here doing nothing. And I hate sitting here doing nothing. So I'm just testing different options right now. I'll see how formidable fighter feels because now I have one extra food in the inventory and that can believe it or not be the difference between me doing one more kill or banking early Maybe it's a placebo effect, but that's feeling loads better right now I'm actually getting like a ton of kills a trip just from the feral fighter, which is uh, very odd But maybe scythe feral fighter just deals so much faster damage, I guess it was not a fluke. Formidable Fighter is better than Thralls if you're using Scythe. That shit slaps. <gasps> yes! Another one! Another one! Oh my, yes! Okay, 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 okay. I have no idea how much this cost, by the way. There's like none being sold on the market. Well, I can't like price check on the price check site or whatever. That's the second one though. That can be... Wait, maybe I go Varok? That is uh, really good, but it's like scary because if I say, yo, I'm selling Primordial Crystal, then people will know, hey, this guy is doing Cerberus. You know, so I feel like I need to deposit it for a bit longer until I'm done with Cerberus. Okay, so apparently this sells for 12 million. 12 million is enough for like two beast sets. I did not realize this is worth that much money. But my storage, I guess this goes out, crack and tentacle trash. But like, I kind of want to sell it. So basically, each one of these is like 100 mil 07 right now. That's kind of crazy. Two of them is a VLS. It's tempting. Shadow is only 5 mil at the moment. And I did lose a shadow yesterday. So how about we try to sell one? I'm going to try 12 mil. I could also buy a scythe, right? I'm using a loan scythe, so to say, right now. And it's about 12 mil as well. I'll try it down for 11. I'll go down to 10. 10 I'm okay with. Okay, I don't think I'll be selling it right now then. The problem with this is I would need to leave it on the market over a longer period of time for it to sell. And right now we just don't have that type of time. And I don't really want to do that right now. So that's okay. We have like a big, big rebuild possibility with those. And I guess we're going right back. We've done 50 KC. So we're officially one third of the way done with this boss completely. 
Hey, we got an attack level there, 91 already. I've gotten like three levels already, I think. And I keep forgetting to switch into the bracelet accidentally. Dude, I haven't even checked the points in a while, but we're up to 45,000. Each one of these kills gives us 25 points until we reach the 75 kill mark. We actually went very high up, and if I were to log out and log in, I'd be around rank 30 right now, and I haven't even focused on getting points whatsoever. So we're looking very good on the point department, and we haven't even done necessarily anything for points, so that's really good to see. In the next days, that's gonna change because we will start actively playing for points. Oh, I was just TB'd, but I got a really good tab, but I wasn't recording. Oh man, back to not knowing what to do, I guess. Maybe this is a good segue to doing something else. The bridge is in two hours. I did want to quest Crystal Shield. Wait a second, I thought I was needing to do like underground pass and everything, but looks like I just need to do Regicide, and that's it. Yeah, I will not be using that for a while until I return to Serb, and then I think I can buy my own with all the primordial crystals we got, so everything kinda worked out in the end. Okay, I'm just going with Last Recall, Lithness and Arcane Swiftness, and if you're wondering why Last Recall isn't it set on Cerberus at the moment, well, I need to do two quests, and I think if I teleport out of the elf area, I can then recall back, saving me a lot of time, so I'm thinking, I don't know if I know exactly. Anyways, let's uh, do a bit of questing and get a bit of passive agility XP. Alright, let's go ahead and start Regicide. Try not to laugh, but I unironically took the sigil of resilience so my HP restores faster as I'm going through the underground pass because this place eats up your food like very quickly. Like this, I'm pretty happy with how my inventory looks like even if something were to hit me here. And my HP is now regenerating and I didn't need to use any food. Alright, only needed a couple of coal. The guide says you need 20. Uh, and the last time I brought 20 and it's scary, but when you only bring like 10 and you do it how it's properly done, then it's uh, pretty chill. I just need to make sure I don't uh, waste any ports right now and uh, bring this home. Oh, 72 agility on top of that. And I should be able to last recall and continue the quest here, which should be really nice. And here comes the biggest skip in the history of quests. Oh man, it's just beautiful. And just like that, we saved like 20 minutes and now I finished the quest. There it is, Regicide completed, a bunch of agility XP and some coins, we're now up to 73. And uh, running around questing and getting agility is actually kinda nice. I do believe roving elves is the last thing separating us from having a crystal shield. We're gonna be picking the shield, this is gonna be our best in slot shield until DFS. There is 10,000 strength XP, but most importantly, access to this beautiful crystal shield. This is gonna go with me just about everywhere. And the bridge is in 35 minutes, so let's figure out what we will do next. Since the breach is happening very soon, and I absolutely despise Entrana clue scroll steps, I decided, you know what, I'm gonna do an Entrana clue scroll step. I have the Sigil of the Bloodhound equipped, we have no gear because we have to go on Entrana, and I'm still printing agility XP. The life is so good whenever you're doing anything non-combat related. I'm gonna be throwing this Sigil on a lot, basically until I'm 99 agility, for sure. There we go, our first casket, which will be a lot of points, it could be something really good. So, points before opening, 45, 2, 3, 1. And obviously, there's a lot of items we could want, but uh, we will be doing probably 75 clue scrolls of every tier to get maximum amount of points. And we get... That is very, very bad. Wow. I thought clues are like five times drop rate, so this is really unlucky. We also didn't get a lot of points for that either. Well, I guess maybe clue scrolls, you don't get bonuses for the first clue scroll. So maybe I'm trolling a little bit. That's all right. Let's get up for the breach. I will be bringing the Mage's Book, I will be bringing the Occult, and I'm gonna be trying to sell one Primordial. The last two sold for 12 million and 10 million, so I'll sell one of those and maybe increase the gear just a little bit. Because even if I were to die again, like I did yesterday, there is no problem. I have an entire extra Primordial Crystal I can trade for the entire gear that I lose. So I'm in a good spot right now, financially. Right as we are preparing for a breach 10 minutes to go, I am snagging myself a Sigil of Enhanced Harvest over here on the Alt account. Goes for about 1.5 mil right now, and it's a perfect sigil for what I'm doing. We really went full circle yet again, this time using Mage's Book, using full items, and I just keep barraging. I'm not gonna go out of there with a the shadow again, because it's just awkward, you can't have a shield. So I have a very basic tank setup, and then when a breach spawns, boom, and then boom when I need to tank, and then we are chilling. Outer Fort is in Varlamor. There's gonna be so many people here, stuff is gonna be dying quick. Yeah, stuff dies in one hit, everything. There is way too many people. Oh yeah, I didn't check my points whatsoever. 
Oh, there's a tier 5. I can take this one. Another tier 5. Nice. Bro, it, 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 like, this is where they really need to put more HP on these monsters. When there is this many people on world, like, that's the annoying part. Now the emblem. Okay, pick air on me. Brew up. Entity hider, don't see shit. See, that's an issue, right? Like, they can entity hider me. And there is nothing I can do to see them. So what's my outplay? This time I'm just gonna run, but... Uh, it's really cringe. Like, there's no way he sees me in all of that. But sure. I personally think that's kinda... Kinda scummy. That's really messed up from Race, because he does it every single breach. And there is no way he finds me in the group of, what, 150 people? Anyways, even though I had very low amount of supplies, I made it out. The breach ends in one minute, I don't think I can even gear fast enough to get back. I'm gonna try, but it's gonna be too late. Actually, you know what, I'm not even gonna go back, we're gonna end it here, it's usually 15, there's maybe 3 more mobs spawning, and then the breach ends, but, uh, today we didn't die, okay, today we didn't end it on a death, it got close, my restores were definitely very low there, but it was nice movement behind the tree into escape situation that we pulled off. Deadman mode is starting to get really spicy, competing for just about everything because we only have four worlds and everybody's coming to max bracket, so the videos are gonna be hard to do, honestly. Regardless, it's been an absolute pleasure making this video. If you guys made it this far, do consider subscribing. And if you want to support me further, you can check our membership program. You can get the videos that I upload one day ahead. But that is only possible when there is no special events happening like Deadman Mode. But there's also a ton of other perks. If you guys want to look at it, I would really appreciate it. And with that being said, I'll see you again tomorrow with another Deadman Armageddon video. Have a good one and bye-bye.